If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator news, updates, and add-ons. And today we're going to go through a few really cool add-ons that I think uh, might help you guys in your flight simulation experience. So stick around. So this first one on the list, you guys, is one that I came across just a couple of days ago and I found it very useful. If you were like me and you were constantly shifting between different setups, i.e. whether it be VR, motion simulation, triple monitors, single monitors, multiple displays, pop-outs, you name it. If you're doing a lot of testing like I am, every now and then things go wrong. For example, one of the situations that I had happened where this tool became exceedingly helpful was I had initially multiple monitors hooked up. I had my pop-out displays out and about. And uh, one of those monitors I have since disconnected. When I went to relaunch the simulator in that particular aircraft where the pop-out was last used, the pop-out was off screen and I was unable to retrieve it. So I was able, by changing the resolution of the simulator, it actually provided me with an opportunity to bring it back into focus. There's a couple of other different variants, uh, variable options here that uh, make it pretty cool. Um, you guys can see you can do everything from your graphic settings. Let me close this one down to everything else all the way down to the finer details. So you have your generalized settings as well as the more highly uh, detailed settings. The really cool thing about this is it gives you a bit more variance and option in comparison to what comes with the Microsoft Flight Simulator GUI. I really enjoyed this little application. It's very simple, not much to it. It does allow, allow you to import and export your settings. Now, why is that a good thing? Because you can also export your settings, save them out locally onto your hard drive. And then if something goes wrong, you are able to rapidly import them back in and have it there, everything restored to its last functioning state. It really does offer a pretty significant value to something that is so easy and you would think that is so, um, Simple, I guess, is the easy way to say it. So again, this is FS2020 user, user config editor. I wanted to make sure that you guys are aware of that, especially if you're someone like myself who does a lot of testing and playing with the settings. Now for this next one, there are multiple applications that do what this one does. But what I really enjoyed about this one is the simplicity of the GUI and how easily it's laid out. This is called FS Launcher. And what it allows you to do is launch both the simulator as well as any third party applications and tools, et cetera, that you want launched at the same time. I counted up the other day that, and if I were to do a full flight with absolutely everything that I wanted running, specifically in a, in a tube liner, an airliner, um, I counted it out the other day, it was 16 applications that I would want running at any given time to have that full ultimate experience. I don't normally do that because launching 16 applications is a pain in the backside. Then you still have to configure them depending on what you're doing, but this at least takes one of those steps away. Now, one of the things that I really do appreciate about developers who do this kind of work is that they also think ahead and they also uh, mention things like upcoming features and things that can be brought forward. One of the things that I really like is profiles and state saving. State saving is going to be, I'm kind of curious where they're going with that. Is that state saving just for the aircraft or is that going to be state saving for the particular application? In which case that could really change things quite a bit. But this is another one that I really wanted to show you guys because I really appreciate, again, how simple and how nicely the uh, the GUI is or the UI is, if you will. I also like that it has a light mode and a dark mode. I absolutely despise light mode. I think it just fries my eyeballs. So anything that has a dark mode automatically gets a recommendation from me. But um, again, I wanted you guys to be aware of this application as well, because if you are like myself and you are constantly running different applications, this is a great tool to have. Next up on the list, and there again, there are many out there like this one, and I always like showing them off, especially when it has a four-star rating. And that is called My Destination. My Destination helps you pick a uh, airport to fly to based on anything from distance from the current location that you're at, as well as you can set the direction. Uh, there's a few other different settings that you guys can change, but one of the biggest things for me is definitely the distance and the direction in which you want to fly. Much without the hassle of something like NeoFly, if now I 
want to correct that. I very, very much so enjoy NeoFly, but if you're someone who just needs something similar that just picks a different location, maybe a place that you hadn't thought of flying before, and that's really the advantage of these kind of applications, is they send you to places that you wouldn't even think to go. NeoFly, for example, has taken me to multiple locations just in Arizona and around the Tucson area that I didn't even know were there up until using it, so it was pretty cool. So applications like this are something that I always want to show off as it further enhances the power brought to us by Microsoft Flight Simulator simulator being able to fly to virtually anywhere in the world. Even if some of the textures and quality may not always be the greatest on that particular location of scenery, if they're very remote, this still gives you a new way to look at the world when you're doing your general aviation or even commercial flying. So again, this little application is called My Destination and a link to it, of course, will be down in the description below. Sticking with the theme that there are many applications out here that do something similar, but this one was another one that I found to be very, very lightweight. This one I have tested out and I love that it has a YouTube trailer. So make sure that you guys check this out. The trailer is very, very well done and I'm very appreciative of how simple the application is. You can literally track every aspect of the aircraft's flight in this little application. It brings a lot of the features once you're inboard and flying that Navigraph has as far as tracking as well as taxiway information and things like that as you have a top-down satellite view that breaks down the airport. Now, it doesn't necessarily give you all the taxiway labeling, things like that. But what I really like that this is doing is giving you an actual tracking ribbon that also follows the aircraft, letting you know where you've been, where you're at. Where I find the value in something like this more uh, accurately, I should say, is when you're tr using like traffic patterns and things like that. Having the tracking ribbon makes it really nice to be able to sort of see the parallel lines, give you an idea of where you are as far as distance, and then uh, allows you to sort of set visual landmarks on the top down map to uh, use to make your pattern work a little bit better. However, the overall application, the information that it provides is absolutely on par. Let's go ahead and come up top so you guys can see a bit more of the information that it gives you. Literally breaks down your flight step by step. It not only gives you the tracking, but all of the necessary information and anything that you guys might need up top as the flight continues on forward. Let me go ahead and move forward. It also gives you terrain elevation. So this is very helpful for flight planning and things like that, especially in general aviation, where you need to be able to set a top of cruise altitude or top of climb cruise altitude in general aviation to avoid any mountains, telephone poles, or, uh, you know, ducks flying with little geese bones. But anyways, that is going to be FS track, you guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this one down below. There are a lot of apps like it that do very similar work, and I know that, but I think this might be a neat one for you guys to try out um, for your flight experience. This is an application that I have reviewed before, and that is MSFS Aircraft Pinner. Now, it does quite a few different things, you guys, and I'll let you guys take a gander at the uh, features of this application right here. But one of the things that I really want to specify that I really appreciate now, there are some aircraft before I get into this that are what's called encoded, meaning that it does not allow you to actually access the contents of the aircraft folder, which prevents this particular application from working with this uh, with some of these aircraft. However, the idea behind this aircraft, what it does is it allows you to set favorites of your aircraft, meaning that whatever aircraft you deem as a favorite aircraft will appear at the top of the list versus scrolling through every single aircraft that you have until you find the one that you want or having to come up and use the search bar. Any aircraft that you deem as your favorite will automatically appear in the top few rows and then it will get into the sequence of any other aircraft that you haven't deemed as your favorite. Now it does quite a bit more. It has been optimized for virtual reality and really provides a really a welcome tool that should have been in the simulator to begin with. But you know, what are we to say that here again is a most recent change log. And this is kind of nice here. The tool windows cannot be maximized. Um, and these are all things that are obviously adjusted. Aircraft details clear and disable after uh, exiting visual editor. And that's the other neat thing is it provides a visual editor for those of you who are interested in that, um, especially if you are someone who's maybe a skin creator, that could be a big deal for you guys, as well as a few other features that really come in handy. For me, it's all about being able to just simply pin an aircraft as your favorite. That really makes a big difference to me. And you guys can see you can even rate them based on the number of stars that are currently selected. So not only can you favorite an aircraft, but you can also favorite your favorites. Um, so a really neat tool, again, very, very simple, but provides a much needed feature in Microsoft Flight Simulator given the hundreds of aircraft that now exist for the sim.
Again, please remember that there are plenty of marketplace aircraft that unfortunately this will not work with, and that is due to the developer encoding the aircraft and basically locking the folders down so that way we can't see what's inside of them in order to sort them as desired. So keep that in mind. That is not a restriction of the developer. Um, that was a uh, unfortunately as designed by the aircraft manufacturer or developer, I should say. Last on the list, we have a premium product that costs 10 US dollars, and that is called FS Starter. FS Starter allows you to, using an application, set your aircraft anywhere in the world in any condition, altitude, or direction, as well as creating your arrival and destination points. Um, if you choose, it has a map overlay as well as an in-flight map that you can follow and track your flight as the uh, aircraft progresses through your specified route. What it really does do, though, is allows you to create your own uh, points of interest, such as your own house, maybe your own neighborhood, your own city, things like that, as well as a bunch of other features that are very, very welcomed. The really big thing about this that I think uh, speaks out the most is because it is in such a simple UI, it does not require the multiple screens bouncing around, as you guys can see here, um, that Microsoft Flight Simulator Default World Map has. The Microsoft Flight Simulator Default World Map and Flight Planning has a lot to be desired, in my personal opinion. Uh, but being able to use a one menu and be able to um, basically specify any part of the air, uh, flight that you want. Again, if you want to start in the air, you can set your altitude, set your speed, set direction, all that good stuff from this one application and be able to launch into your flight exactly as you want it to be. Where Microsoft Flight Simulator customizing some of that stuff can actually be quite a pain in the butt in the default world map. So. I wanted to make sure that this one hit the map um, of my add-ons list in case that you guys found something like this would be interesting for your particular cockpit experience. As always, guys, I hope you guys appreciated this video and found some useful tools to add to your Microsoft Flight Simulator world. And stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.